says in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, now we got to turn that one down. Testing one, two, one, two. That's better. A little more, a little more. All right, yeah, that's good. You guys can hear me? All right. All right, well, I'm back again this week. <clears throat> and, you know, last week we talked about uh, being grateful in the hard times and how we can lose this grateful spirit because we get overwhelmed by our circumstances and that life genuinely is hard at times and we can still have grateful hearts even in those trying circumstances when we turn our eyes back to what God's doing in our lives right by looking at all the reasons we can be grateful instead of all of the reasons we feel are holding us back in life and one of the reasons I'm grateful, like I said last week, is, uh, again, for you guys and uh, everything that God's doing out there in Franklin Grove, mostly just being around uh, God's people. You know, it's just been the biggest thing the past few months to keep me going, just to hear everything that God is doing in everybody's lives out there, knowing that, you know, I'm on the right track. And I, I honestly, I don't know where I would be without that. And it seriously brings me so much joy whenever I get to be around you guys or sit down and have a conversation with someone, go visit somebody at their house out there. And I can truly say that when I'm having an encounter with one of you guys, I'm experiencing God's love. And I can know that I have true brothers and sisters in the Lord. All right. And that's gotten me and... So many others that I know through some very hard times in their lives, through their walks with the Lord, and it's helped them know that God has still loved them, and by them expressing that through their lives continually, no matter what. And today, that's what I really want to get into, is how big of an impact we really make on each other to help us realize that we really need each other. Because Jesus never called us to be lone wolves. He never told us to go out and do this by ourselves. He, and when we isolate ourselves from God's people or from what we feel like God's doing in our lives is when we're most vulnerable for, for attack. And it doesn't even mean that we have to be physically alone. But we can be up here. We can be alone. We can feel alone, right? Right? He wants us to feel alone in our circumstances, like make us feel like we're the only ones dealing with issues, right? Make us feel like no one can relate to what we have going on, and maybe you are going through a certain set of circumstances that maybe nobody else is going through, but it doesn't mean that you're alone in that. And when we get this mindset, it causes us to separate ourselves from the church. Again, maybe you're, maybe you're not physically separated, but you're not present. You get what I'm saying? You're showing up, and you're doing the things you got to do, and up here, you're just not there all the way. No, the devil starts playing in our minds, and he makes us believe lies, or makes us feel like and think in our hearts and our minds that, we have to take this on by ourselves, and this is why being a part of a church is so critical, and where us being the hands and feet of Jesus in the church really comes into play, where we have an opportunity to love people that need it, right? And today I just kind of been thinking of a few things that I've really seen and I've experienced that 
I know God's used in my life to equip us for that. To help each other stay on the path that God's called us to be on. To keep us accountable and present in each other's lives. And the biggest thing that we forget is, you know, we might not have everything in common. I mean, especially here at this church, there's so many different people from so many different walks of life and so many different backgrounds, and we were raised differently. Man, but we, we have one bond that can't be broken by anything, and that's Jesus. And we forget that a lot of times, you know. 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen says, Some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free, but we have all been baptized into one body once by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Like I said, we all come from different walks of life, but God is the one thing that holds us together, right? It's why we are who we are today. That's why this is families of faith. This is why we have so many different people from so many different walks of life that come here, because there's one bond that can't be broken. And though we really do have an awesome church, we can sometimes stick to our little groups, you know, and it happens for everybody, no matter who you are, and we kind of put up these walls or these kind of excuses to not get closer together, right, or not meet new people or allow God to use you to work in somebody else's life, right? We start telling ourselves, you know, do we really have that much in common, you know, the did you grow up in that area? You know, did we go to the same high school? You know, have you lived around Joliet? Or, you know, could I even see myself hanging out with you? You know, see, kind of look like a square. And, man, I'm a pretty cool dude, right? I mean, that's what we think. Why would I even want to be around that person? And we might not say these things out loud, but, you know, it shows in our lives sometimes. And, again, but... All these things that we feel like we need to have connections, they fade away anyway, right? Your sports team, where you work at, what kind of job you got, how you were raised, you know, your race, or if you're, you know, if you're poor, if you're rich, you know, all these things, man, at the end of the day, Don't weigh a hill of beans when it comes to Jesus because the experience that we have together when we come to serve God, it it surpasses all of that. I mean, I can't tell you how many times God's brought so many different people in my life and how many different experiences I've got to share with so many different people. And when I look at it, you know, I look at guys like Jack McMillan or like Mike Cradville or Andy and, you know, I got these brothers and I'm 24 years old, man, and I shouldn't be hanging out with these guys that are 30, 40 years older than me. I mean, they can be my father, my grandfather, right? And it's like, how do I have any other connection other than what God is doing in our lives? And we have one common goal that brings us together every single time. Right? And whenever we're around each other, whenever, what, well, this should be happening when we're around each other. We should be talking about, not just about the sports or the weather or the things that, you know, we're trying to do this weekend, but about what God's doing in our lives. How about that? How He's moving in our families and our churches and our homes. Letting people know all the big and exciting things that God's doing in our lives because those are the really the things that create those deep bonds that don't break. Those are the things that really hold us together. And, you know, Pastor Joe is a big guy in my life and uh, probably got a million things that I've been mad at him for. And at the end of the day, you know, the one thing I can't ever take away from him, and that always brings me back is this, is that I know he's always faithful to serving God, you know, no matter what it is that we've had go on between us, 
I know where his heart's at. I know that whenever he say, says something to me, he's genuine. Because he's always looking out for, what does God want to do in my life, right? I've never sat down and had a conversation about, you know, this, that, and the other with Pastor Joe. And if I did, it always gets turned around to, you know, this is why we need the Lord back in our country. This is why we need the Lord back in our lives, right? And anybody who's here can attest to that kind of thing. And why wouldn't, why shouldn't that be the same in our lives? Why can't we come into church or in our jobs or in the Bible studies and leave feeling empowered? Because even though maybe nothing crazy has happened in our lives, we got to sit down with some brothers and sisters and hear how God's moving in our lives. And now we're just ready to go out the next day and say, man, if God's doing that and in your life, and he's doing this in your family, and he's changing your kids, and man, he's using you in your workplace, why can't he do the same thing with me? Why can't we be reminded of who we are when we sit down and have conversations with each other? Right? That we just don't, we don't just live to work nine to fives. Proverbs 15, 23 says this, everyone enjoys a fitting reply. It is wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. I mean, when's the last time you had one of those conversations where you really just felt like God was speaking to you through somebody? Where you felt like everything that was being said, whether you're in Bible study or in church, or where you're just having a, maybe you're just having coffee with someone, and you're thinking to yourself, man, I, I couldn't have had a better word at a better time, right? I mean, isn't that supposed to happen when we come together? We motivate each other to live for Jesus. That we pile and come together and share the things that God's doing in our lives and piece them together to see how we can come together and do the Lord's will, right? Hebrews 10, verses 24 to 25 says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting it together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. I mean, isn't that, doesn't that just hit the mark right there? Isn't that why we're told to meet together so we can motivate one another? Because when we don't, When we neglect that, when we say, you know what, I can put off Bible study this week, you know, I'm just not really feeling that great, you know, and I've had this going on and that going on, so I don't know if I'm going to go do this at the church this week, or I don't know if I'm going to go around this person that week, this week, and it's like, you couldn't have put yourself in a worse spot. I mean, there's so many people that say they don't need church to have a relationship with God, and you know what, that's true to a certain extent, man, Jesus died for you and everybody else. And where you're at with him is, is up to you. And you can still be blood-bought and not show up every Sunday and not show up on Saturday nights and Wednesday nights. But can I tell you, you're not going to have the thriving relationship you want. Why? Because it's not about the building and it's not about the things that we do in the building, but it's about what are we doing with each other, you know? How are we building each other up while we're here, you know? What kind of connections are we making while we're here, right? You know, who's a part of your life when you come here? You know, who is God tying you to when you come here? Who's that person that you call up on the phone and talk to for an hour or two when you're going through it? Who's that kid that's looking at you every single day as a mentor in their life, right? And you don't even know it. Who's that person that's looking at a distance that's saying, Man I, man, I know this person's going through it. Or, man, I know this guy's been so faithful for so many years. And whether they know it or not, it's been motivating me to come back every single week. To ask you questions. To ask you questions that challenge you and grow you. Because when you're walking by yourself, it's real easy to just take the easy path. I mean, how do you expect to hear from God when you're walking on your own? Not that God doesn't speak to us individually, but I know that when God speaks to me and then I get around his people, he confirms everything he says. 
And if not, he gives me a new word around his people, right? He gives me something new to look forward to when I'm around his people. And his people, when God speaks word to me, he says, they hold me accountable to what God has told me to do. They help me move forward in what God's told me to do. Whether they're writing me a check or making me food or saying, how can we help you out with this or that? Or brother, how can I be praying for you? Right? Man, I'm going to come out and visit you, right? All these things that people have done in my life to help me be the person that God's called me to be. Maybe I'm just sitting, again, maybe I'm just sitting there having this conversation and God speaks a word to me again and I just hear the exact same thing coming right back to my ears. And I'm telling you, this kind of stuff can't happen when you feel like you got to carry the load by yourself or when you want to be a one-man show, when you feel like nobody else cares about what you're going through. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich, li- rich and satisfying life. And isolating ourselves from God and his people allows the devil again to come steal our joy. To kill the relationships that we have with God and with each other. And to destroy the things that God is doing in your life and in the life of those around you. We gotta stay present with God's people. We gotta push forward together with God's people, reminding each other of the truth that we need to hold on to. Because though we know the things that we know, you know, we sit in the Bible studies and we get in the Word and we know the scriptures that we should apply to our lives. Again, the circumstances of life hit us and we feel weak and powerless, though that's not the case. That's not who we are, but that's how we feel, right? And we let the circumstances get the best of us and we forget who we are. But having that support that you need from God's church reminds you of who you are. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. There are Three are even better, for a triple braided core is not easily broken. Matthew 18.20 says, For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. And there truly is power in numbers, and even more so in God's church. We are a powerful force when we come together to accomplish God's purpose. You know, we... When we come together, God connects the dots in our lives. He puts pieces together that we never had. I remember this time uh, I was at the food pantry working. It was when I first moved into the men's house. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of times where I was at the pantry and I'm just like, you know, is God even doing something here? This and that, blah, blah, blah. And it had been like that for a few months. And uh, we had been praying for this guy. And I know Dave and Pastor Joe and everybody else before me was praying for this guy guy for a long time but uh i had started praying for him and i was just like god you know i know this guy needs a relationship with you and he needs to get rescued blah blah blah." and i was praying for this guy and i was inviting him to the church every time i saw him telling him about what we got going on right and you know he was nice enough to listen to me and that was about it and we had a brother there who came he was coming to the pantry for like a month and he's helping out and the craziest thing happened this guy was his cousin. And so, not too long after that, they obviously see each other. And not too long after that, this guy goes to the Morning Star Mission, and he gives his life to the Lord, and his mom starts coming to church here, and she gives her life to the Lord, and that was that, right? And the things that we try to accomplish, you know, the things we were trying to be faithful for, faithful with, you know, we couldn't accomplish on our own, but it's when we had that one extra guy who honestly didn't even know what he wanted to do with the Lord at the time, right? He just seen what we were doing and was saying, man, I, I better check this out, right? I think 
Uh, honestly, at first he's probably just there to get hours, you know, for his kid coming to school here. And then he's experiencing God in a way that no one else could, right? And we got to experience that with him. <clears throat> and, you know, when we come into these things, when we try to do the things that God's called us to, it's always so much easier knowing that somebody's got your back. It empowers you to have someone in your corner knowing that we can have a backup when we need it. And what I want to ask you today is, when's the last time you've been that for somebody? Right? And what's stopping us from continuing to do that? How can we make an impact on our brothers and sisters today as we leave, as Christmas comes up, you know, after New Year's and as spring and summer come along and we go through all the seasons again, right? How can we stay connected with each other? How about we just start with the small things first, you know? How about you have a conversation with someone new at church tomorrow or tonight? How about that? How about we focus on not the things that we like to do or the things that, you know, we really feel make us us, but focus on the God who brought us together. How about we invite someone over for dinner and then you go to their house for dinner and then you bring your kids together and they hang out or something, right? And then you go see a movie together and hang out as a family, right? And you sit next to each other at church and sit in a new seat today, right? Because nobody likes to do that. How about you start asking each other, you know, what's God doing in your life? And start playing off of that and seeing how you can come together and help each other out, right? How about we use our strengths to benefit others and cover our brother's weaknesses when they need it? How about we really come together and show this world how much we love each other and that they can have that same thing, allowing God's fullness to be seen completely in us, allowing true unity to be seen in our church. Because even in the mainstream church and Church of America, man. We're all divided over so many small, stupid things when it comes to the Bible that, honestly, some of them are important and a lot of them are just, you know, what are we even talking about, really? And we wonder why our country is the way it is, because they don't see a people that stand together, but... We're out in the streets, we're big, bickering, arguing about stuff that maybe just doesn't need to be talked about then and there, right? We feel like we're in competition with other churches instead of wondering how, you know, we can be praying for them or support that other church. Not saying you attend two churches, you better stay here, but realizing that maybe God's doing something there that he's not doing here. And just being okay with that. So how about this? How about we just leave here being more intentional with each other? Realizing that we can have more more of an impact. We can have an impact on more than just our kids and our parents and our friends, right? But that... God will truly bring people that just don't belong together and do crazy things for his glory when we let them. So I don't know where you're at today or what you're going through. But I know this, that I'm challenging us with this today. I also know that you're not alone in this. And we really do have a great church family that loves and cares about each other. I don't know what you're dealing with right now or 
what you feel, where you feel like you're at with God. Well, we got some counselors that are going to come up and they'd love to pray with you. They'd love to be a part of your lives. We got some people here that when you get out of the service that love and care about you, that want to be a part of your lives, that want to support you when it, and whatever they got, whatever you got going on. And it doesn't mean that they got all the answers. It just means that they want to be there for you, right? That we really don't have to walk this walk alone. That in this church, we do have people that truly care about each other. And we don't have to isolate ourselves. So, counselors, if you would come up, please. Maybe you're here today and you never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And you hear me talking about this true, genuine fellowship, these relationships that last forever. And can I tell you something? It's not because we like the bears. It's not because we all work at the same place, even though a lot of us do work here. And it's not because we all have the same political party. It's because, man, we all love Jesus. And we want to see him accomplish something in our lives. And that can happen with you, too. But it starts with you having a relationship with him. Receiving what he did on the cross by dying for your sins and paying the price for that. Realizing that he is the one and only son of God. And he loves and cares about you. No matter what you've done or where you've been. He gives this gift out freely, free of charge. All he asks of you is your heart. So what do you want to do today? Where are you at? Again, whatever it is that you're going through, would you come up here and leave it at the altar? Would you guys pray with me? God, thank you for your faithfulness, and thank you that we get to be an expression of that faithfulness. God, we're supposed to reach out and care for the people of this world and show them your love, God, but help us not to forget your people. Your word says, do good unto all, especially those in the family of believers, God, and sometimes we forget just how important we are in each other's lives. We're so busy trying to serve you and do ministry and evangelize and reach out to people that we forget that we need each other. God, we're not just here to work and 
and do all these things, God, but we're here to support each other and lift each other up to genuinely be a part of each other's lives. God, help us as we leave here today to be true and real expressions of who you are. We'll pray this all in your mighty name. Amen. You're dismissed.